Hi, y'all. Michelle Leslie here. I had a little um, experience the other day on Twitter, and I thought maybe some of y'all might have had, I, I've had this experience before. I thought maybe some of y'all might have had the same experience. So I wanted to share a little bit about about it with you and uh, hopefully give you some um, some thoughts that you can stick in your back pocket and, and use the next time this happens to you. So I was on Twitter and I forget exactly what I had tweeted, but I think it had something to do with 1 Timothy 2.12, which says, let me read it to you. I do not permit a woman to teach or to exercise authority over a man. Rather, she is to remain quiet. And as you may or may not know, that's not everybody's favorite verse. There are a lot of people out there who want to do what they want to do um, as far as having a, uh, a man who wants to, to permit women to preach or for a woman who wants to preach or things like that. Um, they, they don't like that verse and they do whatever they can to get around it or negate it or things like that. So, um, so I had posted this thing that whatever it was that was about First Timothy two twelve, and this lady um, responded with, "Well, do you know Greek? Well, I know Greek, and here's what it says in the Greek." Because as you know, the New Testament was basically written in Greek and the Old Testament in Hebrew, and so she proceeded to tell me what the Greek of this verse meant, which strangely enough was totally opposite of what it says right there in my Bible in plain English. So um, I just wanted to reassure you, if someone gives you this argument, well, I know Greek, um, think about it. The people who translated your Bible, if you have a trustworthy English translation of the Bible, such as the ESV or the New American Standard, um, ESV is English standard version, um, or the Christian standard Bible. Those are three popular, trustworthy English translations, and there are others. Um, but if you have a trustworthy English translation of the Bible, you had a whole team of experts in Greek and Hebrew working very hard to translate that Bible into English. And they were hired to work on those English translations of the Bible because of their expertise, expertise in the languages and their ability to translate the Greek and the Hebrew accurately into English. So, And they probably know a whole lot more about the Greek and the Hebrew than whoever it is you're talking to on the internet who knows Greek or whatever. So, um, so it, it can be helpful to look at the Greek or the Hebrew if you have a good lexicon and you want to look up um, the meaning of a particular word in a verse or, or look up the whole verse in, in the original languages. That can be really helpful because sometimes a word in Greek or in Hebrew has a more nuanced meaning than our word in English. And looking it up in the original languages can give you a more... Um, a more accurate understanding just because it's it's a more enhanced word it has more um, more weight to it it has it's more specific but if you'll notice if um, especially if you look at several different good English translations you'll notice that the translators have translated whatever verse you're looking at pretty much close to word for word in, in English. One version might say, for example, couch, where another version says sofa or something like that. But you'll notice that your good English translations are pretty close. That's because looking at the word in the Greek or the Hebrew is not going to change the meaning of the verse. If that were the case, anybody who looked at the Greek or the Hebrew could come up with any uh, meaning in English that they wanted to, and our, our our good English translations would not be good, but they would be very divergent from one another. So, so you'll notice that the good scholars of Greek and Hebrew usually come up with basically the same meaning for, for the verses, and you can look at them across different English translations. So looking at the verse in in the Greek or the Hebrew is not going to totally change the meaning of the verse. It might give you a little better 
understanding, uh, a little more enlightenment of what the verse says, but it's not going to come up with a totally different meaning than what you're seeing on your page in English that the Greek and Hebrew scholars worked so hard to translate accurately into English. So if you have an English, uh, a trustworthy, good English translation of the Bible, you can be sure that you're getting the accurate meaning of the verse and you don't have to go to the Greek and the Hebrew to find the accurate meaning of the verse. It might give you a little more understanding, but it's not going to, it's not like the English is wrong and the Greek says something totally different. Okay. So if you run into people like that, don't, don't be afraid of them that, oh, they know Greek. Okay. And another thing about that is you'll notice that they don't dispute the English of the of the verses that they agree with um you know god is love oh that's accurate you know um a husband should lay down his life for his his wife oh that's accurate you know they only dispute the english translations of the verses that are their particular hobby horse like egalitarian verses, 1 Timothy 2.12, um, a lot of people with, with Genesis, with the creation account, you know, everything else in the Bible, they don't dispute the translation of that, but they'll dispute what day means in Hebrew. Um, so, so that's another thing to watch out for. But just, just know that you don't need to be intimidated by people on the internet who say, well, I know Greek, and so I know what this verse really means. No, if you have a trustworthy English translation of the Bible, you can be sure that what the Bible said, what your translation of the Bible says in English is accurate. There are plenty of smart people working to translate the Bible into English. They know what they're doing, and it proves out because across different English translations, they all seem to come up with basically the same meaning for the same verses. So don't be intimidated by people on the internet. And um, you, if you have a good translation in English of the Bible, you can rest assured that you're getting the correct and accurate meaning of those verses. The God who was powerful enough to inspire and breathe out his word over so many years and has preserved it up to today is faithful and trustworthy to make sure that the translation that is available to you, that there's a translation available to you that is trustworthy and solid. Y'all have a blessed day.